Hello! Right, <laughs> everybody's taller than me. Um, quick one today. We've been talking about the muscles of the back, we've been talking about the muscles of the hip, and all sorts of bits and bobs, and we go into the pelvis and so on, and I feel like we're missing something out. And what I think we're missing is, we're missing the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at this guy, we'll disembowel him, we'll get deep into the posterior abdominal wall. There are only a few muscles that I really want to mention, and we'll just talk, we'll just point at them, say where they come from and go to, say what actions they contribute to, what movements they occur, and I've just got this skeleton to help point at things. All right, so, okay. Uh, so you've got to start from the top and work your way down with these. Got to take everything out. I'm hoping, unlike last time, that he's actually got the things that I want in there. I think he has. He's, he's nice and muscular. Right? He's got the muscular bits. Fine, I'm going to take your head off. It's easier. Down to the GI stuff. It's a bit sticky. Ah, lovely. Right. So do you see what we're doing, right? The small bowel and the large bowel, this is obviously within the, the greater sac, this is within the peritoneal cavity. So I'm going to take this off and essentially I'm taking the peritoneum with it. So we're now retroperitoneal. And because we're retroperitoneal, we can see the kidneys, we can see the inferior vena cava, we can see the aorta, and we can also see these muscles of the posterior abdominal wall. Now, what have we got? I think the most prominent muscle is here. And actually we can see two muscles. This larger muscle is psoas major, with a P, P-S-O-A-S, psoas major. Um, and psoas major has psoas minor superficial to it. Now psoas major is running from the bodies and the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae. And can you see, look, it's running through the abdomen this is the inguinal ligament here. There's the bladder. Look, this is the, the bony pelvis is down here. Here's the, here's the ilium, the iliac crest. The anterior superior iliac spine is here, the asis. So look, this muscle is running underneath the inguinal ligament and it's going into the thigh. It's going into the femur. Here's the ilium. Here's the pubis. Here's the ischium. So there's the iliac crest here. Uh, these are the lumbar vertebrae, look, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. These are the transverse processes here. There's that little diddy 12th rib, what's left of it. Little floating rib here. So this here, that is the lesser trochanter of the femur. This is the lesser trochanter, this is the greater trochanter right here. So psoas major runs from the lumbar vertebrae to the lesser trochanter of the femur. So when psoas major contracts, it can do a couple of things. Assuming the trunk is fixed, it will flex the, it will flex the hip, as in it'll pull on the femur. So if you're uh, led down and your femurs are fixed, your legs are fixed to the floor, then it'll contract and it'll, it'll lift the trunk up. So basically it brings the, it brings the, uh, the trunk and the femur closer together, flexion. Um, the little muscle on top then is psoas minor. Many of us don't even have a psoas minor. And when we're dissecting cadavers, it's not always easy to see and pick out the difference between psoas minor and um, psoas major. Psoas minor runs from the bodies of the T12 and L1 vertebrae, and we're losing it here under the external iliac artery and external iliac vein, but it's gonna run down to where the pubis meets the ilium, right down there. Um, so it's going to have effect just between the, across the pelvis and the, and the lumbar vertebrae, right? So it can help, it can help flex the trunk, but really it's such a weedy little thing. How useful is it in humans? I don't know. Now, here and here we have iliacus. And iliacus, look, it's a big, broad fan muscle, and it's coming from the iliac crest and the, the wing of the ilium. That's the, the smooth, large space of the ilium under here. And iliacus runs from the iliac crest and the iliac fossa 
to again the lesser trochanter. Now this is going to have a similar function across the pelvis between the pelvis and the femur, right? So it's going to give you flexion of the of the hip, flexion of the of the femur at the hip. So iliacus and psoas major often get talked about together and combined as iliopsoas. So that's one, two, three. And the other muscle I want to point out is this one here. Now we can only see a bit of it here, even if I take the kidney off. But this is, see how it's kind of a flat sheet of muscle? This is quadratus lumborum. So quadratus meaning quadrangular, so kind of rectangular in shape, lumborum of the lumbar region. And quadratus lumborum is running between, look, the iliac crest, and also there's a ligament between the vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae, and the iliac crest, the iliolumbar ligament. It's also attached to that. And then it's running up to the vertebrae, up to the transverse processes of L1, L2, and L3 vertebrae, uh, and also the 12th, the rib. Now look, this is running in this direction, and it's going between the vertebrae and the pelvis. So this is going to have a role in lateral flexion from side to side. It's one of the muscles I need to stretch to try and keep my, uh, my hips and my pelvis working properly when I'm running so much, and also stabilizing the pelvis relative to uh, the vertebral column. So the quad quadratus lumborum muscle is actually quite important and very functional. Notice how when we're looking at the posterior abdominal wall, look, so across the psoas major and psoas minor we can see the ureter running down here, and where psoas major is running down here we can see the common iliac artery running laterally to split into the external and internal iliac arteries. Um, we can see the kidneys up here, so the inferior part of the kidney is upon psoas major, and look, here's quadratus lumborum and, and the kidney here. So these posterior abdominal wall structures that we often talk about lie upon these muscles of the posterior abdominal wall, um, which is why I wanted to include them. That's what I wanted to talk about. The other thing that forms much of the posterior abdominal wall is the diaphragm, because it's a big domed shape, right? And that dome means it's, it's forming part of the anterior abdominal wall and also for part of the posterior abdominal wall. And we can see these slips here. And that's it. Of course, the, the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall, there are three layers in here. And we'll talk about those another day, probably when we talk about the, the inguinal canal. Okay. All right. Those are the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall. Done. Ticked. See you next time.